Tonight on Y News. Senate begins probe on alleged cell phone load robbery as giant telco suspends some third-party service providers over load theft. The Philippine National Police launches an investigation on some employees of the Department of Foreign Affairs in an alleged connivance with passport fixers. The Bureau of Customs seizes millions worth of smuggled cigarettes and firecrackers. Y News begins now. From the TV News and Rescue Command Center in Quezon City. This is Y News. Good evening. The Senate starts its investigation on the alleged cell phone load theft. According to the two giant telecommunication companies, they have already suspended some of what they call value added service providers. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. Some mobile prepaid users today attended the Senate hearing and presented their complaints on the questionable deductions on their loads. Gigi Lapi is surprised of a sudden insufficient load even if she didn't use it or give consent to any offer of value-added services. May time pa nga siya, so yan, 2, 2 a.m. in the morning, 2 a.m. tapos tig 2, 2.50 siya, ganyan. Tapos yung isa nga, 30 pesos kinain. So I, did, I don't even know... What, what these were. The two giant telecommunications company explains the charges for value-added services such as ringtones and other downloads cannot be deducted from prepaid loads without any consent signified by the cell phone users to the value-added service providers. According to the telcos, some of the third-party providers have already been suspended and removed. There's this vast provider of loan cut deals which we suspended. Uh, it's been uh, involved in this uh, erroneous uh, billing of our customers. That effective March 5, this Monday, we're going to do a system refresh. All our customers will be opted out and they will have to opt in again. May record po ng mga complaints and hindi maayos ang sistema. So, pinagtatanggal na rin po namin yan. During the probe, the senators also questioned how the third-party companies or the providers got the cell phone numbers. Some experts advise the smartphone users to be careful in installing applications. We have to be careful in setting the permissions and all that things when we download uh, apps and install them. This is one of the possible vectors for that kind of fraudulence. In connection with the alleged fraud, the National Telecommunications Commission is now preparing a draft for the strict policy for vast providers. The Department of Trade and Industry calls on the public who have been victimized by the cell phone load theft. We summon the telco and then um, ask the complainant to come and then for the most part, the telcos reimburse. Today's hearing saw some measures to have been agreed upon by the telcos. Yun yung bawat load na ibabawas po sa atin, kailangan po meron tayong notification. At kung nakita ho natin na hindi tama ito, meron tayong oras para i-complain na ito at ibalik yung pera po sa atin. Meanwhile, the two telco companies assured the public that they will implement the one-year validity of 300 pesos and below cell phone loads starting July 5. Last January, the telcos had started the one-year validity of 300 pesos and above loads in conformity with the joint memorandum circular of DTI, DICT, and NTC. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Meanwhile, the Philippine National Police has launched an investigation on some employees of the Department of Foreign Affairs. Mon Hokson will tell us why. The operation of the Philippine National Police against passport fixers does not end in their apprehension. The PNP is now investigating some DFA employees who are allegedly involved with some of the passport fixers. Continuous ang aming uh, co co collaboration with the DFA at itong uh, uh, police sa monitoring at cooperation naman against fixers. Just recently, 23 passport fixers were arrested. 
in an entrapment operation at the DFA office in Asiana in Paranaque City. The fixers are now detained in the Southern Police District in Taguig. The fixers will be charged with estafa and violation of RA 9485 or the Anti-Red Tape Act. The PNP says the fixers take advantage of the time where acquiring a passport is difficult. Part of their modus operandi is asking money in exchange of an appointment slot in the DFA. There are also those who ask for 3,000 pesos for a speedy process of their passport. Some others are involved in selling fake endorsement letter from the government. Ano nangyari nga, hindi naman napapabilis, kundi niloloko ka lang, kinuha lang yung pera mo. Pero actually, dadaan ka rin talaga sa normal procedure. Meanwhile, some applicants still choose to go through the legal process instead of getting the services offered by fixers. Pansarili mas maganda kasi minsan baka scam kasi. Kasi po eh, yung mga fixer kasi pag ano na po, di yan na tama po si pag... Pag naglalakad ka ng passport, baka may sabit. The PNP believes that aside from the DFA employees that are now under investigation, the fixers belong to a group that victimizes passport applicants. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Paranaque City. In other news, the Department of Health will leave the procurement of dengue kits to the Department of Budget and Management. Here's why from Aiko Miguel. The Department of Health or DOH is set to send to the two houses of Congress a letter requesting the use of 1.161 billion peso refund for the unused dengue vials from the Sanofi for the procurement of dengue kits. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, however, clarifies they will leave the procurement of dengue kits up to the Department of Budget and Management Beads and Awards Committee for transparency and to avoid any issues of corruption. Para hindi maulit na nga yung nangyari na hindi nagkaroon. Di ba ito naalala nyo, one of the controversies here is hindi na dumaan ito sa Congress, yung uh, pag-procure ng Dang Baksha. This morning, Secretary Duque conducted inspections in Quezon City hospitals to ensure that they do not charge Dang Baksha vaccinees. These hospitals include Quirino Memorial Medical Center, East Avenue Medical Center, and the Philippine Children's Medical Center. The health secretary checked the situation of Dengvaxia vaccinees and if the hospitals have enough facilities to assist the patients. Secretary Duque advises hospitals to post large signage showing the process of medical assistance given to Dengvaxia vaccinees. The signage must also emphasize that there is no balance billing among hospitals to assure parents they do not need to pay any fees. Pag discharge na po siya for accounting purposes, dadaan na lang po siya sa caser at tataka na lang po siya ng discharge. Wala po silang babayaran. The DOH also has a directive that Dengvaxia vaccinees must be carefully assessed to check whether the discomfort they feel is related to the vaccination or if they have pre-existing conditions. Secretary Duque reiterates to hospitals and doctors that they might face charges such as negligence, civil and administrative cases in case they are found to be charging Dengvaxia vaccinees. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. A health advocate group dashes to Sanofi Pasteur's office in Taguig City condemning the pharmaceutical company's alleged neglect over the Dengvaxia anomaly. The Coalition for People's Right to Health says Sanofi violated the rights of patients to know the real effects of Dengvaxia vaccine. The health advocate group insists Sanofi must pay the parents of the Vaxia vaccinees. The group also blames the administration of former President Benigno Aquino III, who led the vaccination program on thousands of children in the country. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Bureau of Customs, or BOC, seized almost 9 million pesos worth of smuggled cigarettes and firecrackers. Rajel Adora will tell us why. The Bureau of Customs presented to the media the smuggled cigarettes and firecrackers worth around 9 million pesos that they seized at the port of Manila. According to BOC Commissioner Isidro La Peña, the shipments that were seized on February 21 and 27 were misdeclared as hardware appliance and footwear products. The contrabands reportedly came from China. The shipment containing firecrackers were immediately isolated. Medyo isolated giant. Para wala makalapit. And then uh, this has been coordinated with the uh, firearms explosive uh, gr group of, uh, of the Philippine National Police. The Customs Bureau is now investigating Paragon Platinum International Trading Corporation and Power Buster Marketing 
the consignees of the shipment. The BOC will destroy the smuggled products after the investigation. Meanwhile, the BOC reports that they have hit their target revenue collection last month. The BOC has collected 43 billion pesos, a surplus of 2 billion pesos from 41 billion pesos target revenue collection. If you have made it to February, then there's no reason why you cannot make it to any month of the year from here on. Commissioner La Peña is confident that the Bureau will hit their target revenue collection of 133 billion pesos this year. Rigel Adora, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The relatives of a student who was mauled by his classmates calls for punishment against the child's perpetrators. Here's why from Victor Cosare. Shirley cannot believe how her grandchild suffered from the hands of her classmates in a bullying incident in Sacred Heart College in Lucena City. <laughs> Even the child's mother, who works overseas, was surprised to have watched the video. Shirley said they met to settle the dispute, but after the video went viral on social media on March 1, Shirley wanted to punish the students who hurt her grandchild. Nag-usap na kami dun sa ano na, nag-sorry yung bata, pero hindi ko alam na ganun katindi. Kasi kung inamin nila yan nung, nung nagharap kaming una, hindi naman ako papayag. Shirley said the child confessed to her that the incident on the viral video was not the only time her classmates hurt her. Shirley believes the incident has brought severe trauma to the child. Ayaw na niyang pumasok hanggat nandudong pa yung, yung ibang involved na kung hindi matatanggal talaga yung mga involved dyan. The school administration vows to reopen an investigation on the matter to give both parties the chance to explain their sides. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Meanwhile, Malacanang thanked the European Union for the European, European bloc's proposed financial aid for the country's drug rehabilitation centers. The EU has offered 3.8 million euros for the said project. According to Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque, President Rodrigo Duterte is ready to accept donations from EU as long as there is no precondition that it would entail the bloc's intrusion in the Philippine government's policies. The EU's desire to support our drug rehabilitation centers runs parallel with the Duterte administration's holistic approach to the drug problem by treating it not just a, as a national security issue but a public health concern as well, including rehabilitation and reintegration of that drug dependence. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority today orders the suspension of three personnel who mauled a coconut vendor in Pasay City last Saturday. Rajela Dora will tell us why. In this video, MMD personnel mauled a coconut vendor while doing a clearing operation in Pasay City last Saturday. After the incident, which was caught on video and has gone viral on the internet, the MMD authority suspended the personnel involved. We don't tolerate this kind of actions no, from our employees. Whatever the reason, wala silang karapatang malamit. Assistant General Manager Jojo Garcia says both parties were wrong as the vendor was selling in a prohibited area while the personnel resorted to violence. He adds that the MMDA should not be blamed for the sins of the few. Don't pinpoint the whole agency because of this isolated incident. Madam instances sa sasaktan din ang enforcers namin. Meanwhile, Romnick Relos, the bruised coconut vendor, says he will file a complaint against the MMDA personnel. Para sa akin, hindi, maga, hindi madadala sa hingi ng pasensya yung ginawa niya sa akin. The MMDA, in the meantime, will return his cart and replace his coconuts. Rigel Adora, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Next on Y News. The Solicitor General maintains the co warranto petition he filed seeking to nullify Chief Justice Serena's appointment is constitutional. 
And the Philippine National Police continue search for other members of Malte fighters already in Metro Manila. Why News will be right back. I'm William Theo. Stay tuned for Angelo Castro III. Good evening. On Y News tonight, Senate begins probe on alleged cell phone load robbery as giant telcos suspend some third-party service providers over load theft. The Philippine National Police launches an investigation on some employees of the Department of Foreign Affairs in an alleged connivance with passport fixers. And the lawmaker warns that Sol Jen's petition to nullify Chief Justice Sereno's appointment may lead to a constitutional crisis. Good evening. The Senate starts its investigation on the alleged cell phone load theft. According to the two giant telecommunications companies, they have already suspended some of what they call value-added service providers. Nel Marie Bohok will tell us why. Some mobile prepaid users today attended the Senate hearing and presented their complaints on the questionable deductions on their loads. Gigi Lapi is surprised of a sudden insufficient load even if she didn't use it or give consent to any offer of value-added services. May time pa nga siya, so yan, 2, 2 a.m. in the morning, 2 a.m. tapos tig 2, 250 siya, ganyan. Tapos yung isa nga, 30 pesos kinain. So I, did, I don't even know... What, what these were. The two giant telecommunications company explains the charges for value-added services such as ringtones and other downloads cannot be deducted from prepaid loads without any consent signified by the cell phone users to the value-added service providers. According to the telcos, some of the third-party providers have already been suspended and removed. There's this vast provider of Globe cut deals which we suspended. Uh, it's been uh, involved in this uh, erroneous uh, billing of our customers. That effective March 5, this Monday, we're going to do a system refresh. All our customers will be opted out and they will have to opt in again. May record po ng mga complaints and hindi maayos ang sistema. So, pinagtatanggal na rin po namin yan. During the probe, the senators also questioned how the third-party companies or the providers got the cell phone numbers. Some experts advised the smartphone users to be careful in installing applications. We have to be careful in setting the permissions and all that things when we download uh, apps and install them. This is one of the possible vectors for that kind of fraudulence. In connection with the alleged fraud, the National Telecommunications Commission is now preparing a draft for the strict policy for vast providers. The Department of Trade and Industry calls on the public who have been victimized by the cell phone load theft. We saw someone the telco and then um, asked the complainant to come and then for the most part, the telcos reimburse. Today's hearing saw some measures to have been agreed upon by the telcos. Yun yung bawat load na ibabawas po sa atin, kailangan po meron tayong notification. At kung nakita po natin na hindi tama ito, meron tayong oras para i-complain na ito at ibalik yung pera po sa atin. Meanwhile, the two telco companies assured the public that they will implement the one-year validity of 300 pesos and below cell phone loads starting July 5. Last January, the telcos had started the one-year validity of 300 pesos and above loads in conformity with the Joint Memorandum Circular of DTI, DICT, and NTC. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The Philippine National Police has launched an investigation on some employees of the Department of Foreign Affairs. Monok Son will tell us why. The operation of the Philippine National Police against passport fixers does not end in their apprehension. The PNP is now investigating some DFA employees who are allegedly involved with some of the passport fixers. Continuous ang aming collaboration with DFA at itong police monitoring at cooperation naman against fixers. Just recently, 23 passport fixers were arrested in an entrapment operation at the DFA office in Asiana in Paranaque City. The fixers are now detained in the Southern Police District in Taguig. 
the fixers will be charged with estafa and violation of RA 9485 or the Anti-Red Tape Act. The PNP says the fixers take advantage of the time where acquiring a passport is difficult. Part of their modus operandi is asking money in exchange of an appointment slot in the DFA. There are also those who ask for 3,000 pesos for a speedy process of their passport. Some others are involved in selling fake endorsement letter from the government. Ano nangyari nga, hindi naman napapabilis, kundi niloloko ka lang, kinuha lang yung pera mo, pero actually, dadaan ka rin talaga sa normal procedure. Meanwhile, some applicants still choose to go through the legal process instead of getting the services offered by fixers. Pansarili mas maganda kasi minsan baka scam kasi. Kasi po eh, yung mga fixer kasi pag ano na po, di yan na tama po si pag... Pag naglalakad ka ng passport, baka may sabit. The PNP believes that aside from the DFA employees that are now under investigation, the fixers belong to a group that victimizes passport applicants. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Paranaque City. Thousands of transport network vehicle service operators may soon have one less problem to think of. Joanna will tell us why. 300 transport network vehicle service operator went earlier today in the central office of the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board as the agency resumes their processing of application for franchises. With documents held in hand, Julieta Bulaon went to the LTFRB office as early as 6 in the morning, so her application was the first to be processed. It took me, I would say, uh, maybe about 10 minutes. Maybe about 10 minutes lang. Magandang development. Considering the number of applicants that we will have. An operator must submit the requirements such as a copy of a verified application, proof of Filipino citizenship, government-issued ID, copy of ORCR of vehicles, and filled out data sheet of operator form. After accomplishing all five steps, the operator will be given a provisional authority. After 10 working days, the applicant will go back to the LTFRB to attend the hearing for the grant of Certificate of Public Convenience, which is valid for two years. Along with this is the release of a sticker that will indicate that he or she is now a legitimate operator. LTFRB Board Member Attorney Eileen Lizada once again emphasized that they will not process walk-in applicants as well as those operators who have not met the July 2017 cut-off period. Approach their respective TNCs and ask for the respective schedules. Kasi ang hawak namin ngayon, nag-submit na sila. Uh, for this week, alam na namin kung sino ang papasok sa amin. Meanwhile, transport network companies express relief now that their partner operators can once again take trips without any worries. Patagal na natin inaantay na maka-apply ang ating mga TNBS partners. Ngayon with this PA, makakabiyahe na sila ng kampante ang loob. With this process ongoing po right now, yung mga partners po natin, mas, uh, mas mag-iingganyo na po sila to drive on the road. The LTFRB targets to process 300 applications daily from Monday to Friday. The agency even plans to extend their operation hours even on weekends so they can finish the granting of franchises for thousands of TNVS operators. Joan Anu, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The newly installed director of Pidea Region 4 vows to closely monitor the investigation on the alleged use of the agency's identification cards by civilians. Bernard Dadis will tell us why. The Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency or PDEA has investigation underway on the 100 of its personnel in the Calabarzon region for their alleged issuance of identification cards to a number of civilian assets. Director Adrian Albariño, the newly installed PDEA chief in Calabarzon, this is, is strictly prohibited within the agency. Uh, for the record, yung PDEA hindi nagbibigay ng ano ng uh identification cards sa mga confidential informants. Director Albariño adds several PDEA Region 4A personnel are involved in corrupt practices such as extortion. With this, the Region 4A director bounced to tackle the issues in the said office. He says he expects some 100 new PDEA personnel in cleansing this branch of the agency. Ayusin na namin yung uh, struktura at saka staffing ng opisina. And then, i-address namin yung uh, iba't ibang uh, concern sa illegal drugs trade dito sa region. Director Albariño, however, hopes that many of the PDEA personnel undergoing investigation will be cleared of their cases. Bernard Daddy's UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. 
The Philippine National Police continues its search for the other members of the Maute Group here in Metro Manila. Here's why from Lea Ilagan. The Philippine National Police and the Armed Forces of the Philippines arrested Maute sub-leader Abdul Nasser Lumundot and his wife Rai Salam last Saturday in Recto, Manila. PNP Chief Police Director General Ronald Bato de la Rosa says Lumondot is among Mauti members who engage with the police and military in the Marawi siege. General de la Rosa says, based on their interrogation, Abdul Nasser didn't come to Manila to create terror. Naipit sila sa Mindanao, undoing ang Marcelo sa Mindanao, kaya sumibat siya doon pumunta dito sa Mito Manila para maglaylo, para to seek refuge. De La Rosa, however, says the authorities are not discounting the possibility that Lumundot and his wife are recruiting new members to strengthen their force. The PNP chief adds that they are looking for the other members of Maute here in Metro Manila. Meron tayong minumonitor, meron tayong nahanap, but hindi rin pwede sabihin kung ilan at sino-sino. Continuous yung ating effort patungkol dyan. De La Rosa also admits that there is a lapse of security even though martial law already exists in Mindanao. Martial law tayo sa Mindanao. Apa. Tapos, ikaw na ka nagsabi, nakarating dito. So, may pagkukulang tayo sa pagbantay sa kanila paano sila nakalabas. Mm -hmm. But in fairness naman sa ating security forces sa Mindanao, hindi mo talaga pwede i-cordon off yung buong isla ng Mindanao. Lumondot and his wife came to Manila on board public utility vehicles. A violation of Republic Act 9516 or illegal possession of explosives was filed against Abdul Nasser after the authorities recovered hand grenade from him. His wife Rai Salam, on the other hand, is now facing violation of RA 10591 or illegal possession of firearms case after the authorities seized a 45 caliber pistol from her. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue Camp, Krame. Solicitor General Jose Calida stands by the petition he filed before the Supreme Court against the appointment of Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno, saying it is constitutional. My Bermudez will tell us why. Solicitor General Jose Calida raised to the Supreme Court earlier to seek for the nullification of the appointment of Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. This amid the impeachment proceedings in the lower chamber of Congress. This, he says, will fast-track Sereno's trial as SC magistrates themselves will decide on the case. The office of the Solicitor General will not allow you to undergo the indignity that the late Chief Justice Renato Corona suffered at the hands of politicians who unjustly convicted him. You do not deserve that. The Constitution recognizes coerento petition as a legal remedy against an individual who entered public office unlawfully. We are not uh, asking the court to judge her whether she committed uh, uh, as this culpable violations, uh, bribery, treason, etc. No. Very simple lang issue namin. By what authority are you holding your office? Meantime, C.G. Serena's camp is no longer confident that the SC justices will handle the matter fairly. Kasi kung isipin natin, di ba, no, si, si Chief Justice ay ah, hindi natin maasahan yung impartiality mm -hmm. ng Supreme Court kapag sila ang nag-take up ng ganitong kaso. Albay Representative Ed Selagman, meanwhile, urges the seven associate justices who allegedly attempted to oust the chief magistrate to inhibit from the case. Ifugao Representative Teddy Bagilat, on the other hand, slammed this quote, hell-bent rewriting of the Constitution through unconstitutional means. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Akobiko Party List Representative Rodel Batokabe fears of having conflict of powers between Congress and Supreme Court now, now that the Office of the Solicitor General seeks nullification of Sereno's appointment. Grace Cassin will tell us why. Kung ang Kongreso will assert its exclusive power to remove an impeachable official, magkakaroon po tayo ng constitutional crisis. 
This is the reaction of Acubicol Partilids Representative Rodel Batocabe after Solicitor General Jose Calida today filed a petition for co warranto asking the Supreme Court to declare the appointment of Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno as unlawful and to remove her from office. Batocabe fears there will be a constitutional crisis if Supreme Court decides to remove Sereno from her post and the House will not acknowledge the decision. He notes, under the Constitution, it is only the House of Representatives that has a sole power to oust impeachable officials in the government. Batukabi adds that if Congress will allow the Supreme Court to remove Sereno due to a co warrant of petition, this will set a bad precedent and might weaken the impeachment process. But Impeachment Committee Chairman Rinaldo Umali says constitutional crisis will not happen. co warrant uh, uh, presumes that uh, the... Uh, appointed uh, official was not qualified to be appointed. So kung yung issue on qualification, uh, that is not covered by impeachment. To prevent the constitutional crisis, lawmakers call on the Chief Justice to do the right thing. It is honorable for her to resign. That is the honorable thing to do. Mawawala na rin ng integridad ang ating uh, Korte Suprema. Might as well na uh, mag-resign na lang ang ating uh, Chief Justice. Hindi naman po sinasabi natin na guilty siya sa, kan sa mga akusasyon sa kanya. Ay gumawa po ng pinaka-supreme sacrifice of resigning. On Thursday, March 8, the committee will vote on the grounds of impeachment against Chief Justice Sereno. The committee will again set for another day to vote on the committee report. The committee targets to submit the articles of impeachment to the plenary before the session break on March 24. Meanwhile, Malacanang defers to the Congress and the Supreme Court on what will be next for Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque also believes that what is happening to the Supreme Court will not affect the justice system in the country. We have consistently taken the view that we leave it to Congress to remove the Chief, Chief Justice if there are grounds to do so. Now that um, a petition is uh, has been filed in the court, I think there are two petitions now pending in court, we leave it to the Supreme Court to resolve these uh, two separate petitions. However, we stand by our constitutional duty that we will enforce the decision of the Supreme Court, whatever it may be. Grace Castin, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. Detained Senator Laila de Lima is requesting for a medical furlough from the Muntinlupa Regional Trial, Trial Court. Roderick Mendoza will tell us why. Senator Laila de Lima is seeking permission from the court for a medical furlough. Doctors at the PNP General Hospital recently discovered a lump in her liver. But during today's hearing at the Muntinlupa Regional Trial Court, the PNP Hospital Chief admitted they don't have the equipment to perform the liver CT scan procedure on Dilima. Her lawyer is requesting Dilima be brought to a private hospital. Uh, it's very important, according to our uh, me medical expert, the one whom we presented, to determine immediately whether it's benign or malignant. Rigoroso says the procedure will only take an hour and the police can bring the Lima back to her cell when it's done. The senator will also pay for all the expenses, including the transportation of her police escorts. Sabi nga namin, kahit 30 minutes lang yan, tapos ibalik ulit sa kustodyal, wala namang problema. Malaman lang natin kung yung sakit ba ay maluba o hindi. The prosecution is not opposing the medical furlough on the condition that the procedure is conducted in a public hospital. Senior Assistant City Prosecutor Ramon Cito Ocampo says they have witnesses to prove government hospital can perform the procedure. So we will be presenting a personnel who will testify that the Philippine Heart Center, which is a government hospital, na meron 256 uh, CT scan slices. So, in the event, I assuming, wala talagang 256 uh, slices CT scan sa uh, government hospital, then we can present a witness that the CT scan 128 slices will also be the same as the 256 as far as the result, desired result could be achieved. After tomorrow's hearing, the court is expected to rule whether it will grant the Lima's request for a medical furlough. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Muntilupa City. 
Husband and wife was nabbed in Agusan del Norte in a military operation in Agusan del Norte. Joanna no will tell us why. Couple Allen and Luz Viminda Apolinaria were arrested for violating the expanded Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act of 2012 and the Anti-Child Abuse Law. The charges were in line with their alleged recruitment of two to three minors in 2014 to join the rebel group New People's Army. They were nabbed in a joint operation led by the Regional Mobile Forces Battalion 13 and Kicharao PNP last Saturday at P7 Barangay Mahayahay, Kicharao Agusan del Norte. Patuloy pa rin yung operasyon natin no, sa pagtugay sa, ka, sa mga taong paroy sa kanila, yung mga nasa kabilang grupo para uh, tinupad yung ano, ni, sa ating Presidente Duterte na uh, we will encourage also them to surrender. No? According to PNP Caraga, recruitment of minors to engage in war is a clear sign of abuse of their rights. The two were identified as alleged members of Partido Platoon 16-A in Northern Mindanao, Militia ng Bayan. They have a standing warrant of arrest at the 10th Judicial Region Branch 34 of Kabadbaran City in Agusan del Sur. Currently, the couple is detained at Kicharao Municipal Police Station. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Up next on Y News. Malacanang insists that the joint exploration with foreign company in maritime territory has legal basis. Former Health Secretary Janet Garin to face Comelec investigation on Dengvaksha issue. Stay tuned for William Theo. I'm Angelo Castro III and this is Y News. Good evening. Here are the headlines on Y News Tonight. Senate begins probe on alleged cell phone load robbery as giant telco suspends some third-party service providers over load theft. The Philippine National Police launches an investigation on some employees of the Department of Foreign Affairs in an alleged connivance with passport fixers. And Senate Defenders takes Game 1 of UNTV Cup Season 6 Final Series against Malacanang PSC Kamao. Good evening. The Senate starts its investigation on the alleged cell phone load theft. According to the two giant telecommunication companies, they have already suspended some of what they call value-added service providers. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. Some mobile prepaid users today attended the Senate hearing and presented their complaints on the questionable deductions on their loads. Gigi Lapi is surprised of a sudden insufficient load even if she didn't use it or give consent to any offer of value-added services. May time pa nga siya, so yan, 2, 2 a.m. in the morning, 2 a.m. tapos tig 2, 250 siya, ganyan. Tapos yung isa nga, 30 pesos kinain. So I, think, I don't even know what... What these were. The two giant telecommunications company explains that charges for value-added services such as ringtones and other downloads cannot be deducted from prepaid loads without any consent signified by the cell phone users to the value-added service providers. According to the telcos, some of the third-party providers have already been suspended and removed. There's this vast provider of Globe cut deals which we suspended. Uh, it's been uh, involved in this uh, erroneous uh, billing of our customers. But effective March 5, this Monday, we're going to do a system refresh. All our customers will be opted out and they will have to opt in again. May record po ng mga complaints and hindi maayos ang sistema. So, pinagtatanggal na rin po namin yun. During the probe, the senators also questioned how the third-party companies or the providers got the cell phone numbers. Some experts advise the smartphone users to be careful in installing applications. We have to be careful in setting the permissions and all that things when we download uh, apps and install them. This is one of the possible vectors for that kind of fraudulence. In connection with the alleged fraud, the National Telecommunications Commission is now preparing a draft for the strict policy for vast providers. 
The Department of Trade and Industry calls on the public who have been victimized by the cell phone load theft. We summoned the telco and then um, asked the complainant to come and then for the most part, the telcos reimburse. Today's hearing saw some measures to have been agreed upon by the telcos. Yun yung bawat load na ibabawas po sa atin, kailangan po meron tayong notification at kung nakita ho natin na hindi tama ito, meron tayong oras para i-complain ito at ibalik yung pera po sa atin. Meanwhile, the two telco companies assured the public that they will implement the one-year validity of 300 pesos and below cell phone loads starting July 5. Last January, the telcos had started the one-year validity of 300 pesos and above loads in conformity with the Joint Memorandum Circular of DTI, DICT, and NTC. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The Philippine National Police has launched an investigation on some employees of the Department of Foreign Affairs. Mon Oxon will tell us why. The operation of the Philippine National Police against passport fixers does not end in their apprehension. The PNP is now investigating some DFA employees who are allegedly involved with some of the passport fixers. Continue sa aming uh, co collaboration with DFA at itong uh, uh, police sa monitoring at cooperation naman against fixers. Just recently, 23 passport fixers were arrested in an entrapment operation at the DFA office in Asiana in Paranaque City. The fixers are now detained in a southern police district in Taguig. The fixers will be charged with estafa and violation of RA 9485 or the Anti-Red Tape Act. The PNP says the fixers take advantage of the time where acquiring a passport is difficult. Part of their modus operandi is asking money in exchange of an appointment slot in the DFA. There are also those who ask for 3,000 pesos for a speedy process of their passport. Some others are involved in selling fake endorsement letter from the government. Ano nangyari nga, hindi naman napapabilis, kundi niloloko ka lang, kinuha lang yung pera mo, pero actually, dadaan ka rin talaga sa normal procedure. Meanwhile, some applicants still choose to go through the legal process instead of getting the services offered by fixers. Pansarili mas maganda kasi minsan baka scam kasi. Kasi po eh, yung mga fixer kasi pag ano na po, di yan na tama po si pag, pag naglalakad ka ng ano, passport, baka may sabit. The PNP believes that aside from the DFA employees that are now under investigation, the fixers belong to a group that victimizes passport applicants. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Paranaque City. Meanwhile, former DOH Secretary Janet Garin is set to face the investigation of the Commission on Elections on the Ngbaksha issue. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III supports the poll body's investigation. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. Former Health Secretary Janet Garin is set to face the hearing of the Commission on Elections on March 15. She says she is ready to prove that the release of the 3.5 billion peso refund for the procurement of the Dengvaxia vaccines did not violate the election laws. She also insists that the immunization program has nothing to do with politics. The investigation of the law department is in connection with the complaint filed by the Volunteers Against Crime and Corruption and Dr. Francis Cruz, a former consultant in the DOH. The Omnibus Election Code is allegedly violated with the release and use of the fund during the election period. In April 2016, the anti-dengue mass immunization was implemented in the country one month before the national elections. Meanwhile, some DOH officials are also included in the complaint filed by Cruz and VACC in the Comelec Law Department. Those also in the list are the officials whom Cruz alleges members of a mafia at the DOH. The Comelec gave them until March 8 to file their counter-affidavits. Secretary Duque supports the poll body's investigation. It's their mandate to uh, investigate and to ferret out the truth. Uh, pertaining to this Deng Baksha uh, controversy. So uh, we leave it at that. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Some justices and employees of the Supreme Court wear red clothes and neckties during today's flag-raising ceremony. Roderick Mendoza will tell us why. It is a rare occasion for justices and employees of the Supreme Court to wear red during a flag-raising ceremony. 
There was no official statement why. But sources said this is to show solidarity with the 13 justices who compelled Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Reno to go on indefinite leave. Associate Justices Teresita Leonardo de Castro and Samuel Martires showed up in red dress and shirt. While Justices Diosdado Peralta, Lucas Bersamin, and Andres Reyes and Court Administrator Midas Marquez wore red neckties. There is no word whether this is intentional or just a coincidence. But one thing is sure, the Supreme Court do not have such a uniform. Meanwhile, some protesters dressed in black troop the Supreme Court saying they are supporters of CJ Sereno. Naramdaman lang po namin ang mga kababaihan ay wala nang puwang sa ating pamahalaan. Dahil po nung una ay si ano, Laila Dilima. At ngayon po ay bakit pilit na inaalis si CJ si Sereno. The protesters said they do not belong to any group and they just wanted to express their sentiments regarding the issues. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. In other news, Malacanang insists that the joint exploration with foreign companies in Philippine maritime territory has legal basis. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. Citing a Supreme Court decision, Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque stands firm that having an agreement with China on a joint exploration and joint exploitation in the West Philippine Sea is not a violation of the Constitution. The official says if the court allows the Philippines to have a joint exploration with a foreign corporation in a land territory, more so in the maritime territory that the Philippines only has sovereign rights. This is if there is an agreement and the state allows it. Even if it is mining in land territory, the decision said you could allow foreigners to engage in exploration and exploitation of mineral resources, even in areas subject to complete sovereignty. And that is the decision of the court. How much more in an area where there is only sovereign rights? The official also says many countries have joint exploration agreements in exclusive economic zones such as China and Vietnam. And in fact, we could look to the Vietnamese-Chinese Treaty on Joint Exploration and Development as a model for possible um, um, relationship no, between the Philippines and China. If the Philippines and China will have an agreement, particularly on service contract number 57, the Chinese corporation that would be involved in the joint exploration should be subject to the Philippine mining laws. Service contract 57 pertains to the project in northwest Palawan or Calamian where there is no maritime dispute. In contrast to service contract 72 or in Reed Bank in which the Philippines and China have disputes. It will have to be the mining code. The Our domestic mining. law of the Philippines will prevail on 57. In 72 you have to thresh out these details because it will have to be agreed upon. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. Meanwhile, KNC show host Moonlight proves that he is a young artist that the Philippines should be proud of. Leslie Longboen tells us why. Christian Luke Alarcon, also known as Moonlight and KNC show, wowed artists from different parts of the world with his incredible talent. Out of thousands of entries, Moonlight's artwork was among the honorable mentions in the Da Vinci Initiative category of the 13th International Art Renewal Center Salon Competition. It also ranked second in People's Choice. He made his masterpiece Gluttony when he was just 13 years old. And pagkagising ko, ano? Nagulat ako, no, honorable mention ako. Sabi ko, astig ah, nakapasok ako kahit, kahit sobrang daming artist dun. Eh, nagpapasalamat ako sa Diyos kasi nakapasok ako sa honorable mention. Moonlight wants to share an important message with his artwork. Isang hari siya. Tapos, sumusuka siya ng mga pera, ganun, mga kayamanan niya, sinusuka niya. Pa. Ang ibig sabihin kasi parang, um, Yung pag naging ano kayo, parang greedy ka, tapos uh, yung kaya manan yung ginagamit mo sa masama, kukunin sa'yo ng Diyos yun yung, yung, yung mga tinatangkilik mo, lahat yun kukunin. Kasi ginagamit mo siya sa masama. Parang. 
Meanwhile, Moonlight is delighted that Filipinos continue to be recognized in the international art scene. Proud ako bilang Pilipino kasi nakikilala yung ano, pagiging talented ng Pilip, yung mga Pilipino artists, lalong nabubuhay yung art scene dito sa Pilipinas kasi nagkakaroon nga ng international na, na competition. The young artist also joined the competition last year where his entry Old Master was also among the finalists. Moonlight's talent runs in the blood as he came from a family of artists. Leslie Longboen, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. In the battle for third place, the AFP Cavaliers topped the NHA Builders 85-84 on Sunday at the Pasig City Sports Center. The first half of the ball game saw the two sides battling neck and neck, but the two-time champions attacked with their top offense in the third period, leaving the builders behind at 74-55 as the quarter ended. In the fourth quarter, the final buzzer went off with Alvin Vito's three-point shot for the builders, but it was not enough to overpower the AFP. Medyo kinapos. Lumabak sila 19. Pinabol namin. Yung intensity na wala kasi kaya lumobo eh. So nung nagkaroon na ng intensity, wala na. Kulang na sa oras eh. The Cavaliers wins 1 million pesos for the AFP Educational Benefit System Office or AFP EBSO while the team takes home 200,000 pesos. The Builders, on the other hand, wins half a million pesos for the NHA Provident Fund Association, while 100,000 pesos goes to the team. And in the Game 1 of the Best of Three Series of the season's finals, the Senate defenders knock out the Malacanang PSC Kamao with their toughness both in defense and offense, leading to a 77-62 Game 1. The defenders kept the Kamao chasing in all the four quarters. Defenders coach Mike Vermeen gives credit to his players for the win. Collective effort, especially on the defensive side. So, credit goes to the players. Uh, they played well today. They executed the game plan properly. The two playing Senators who both contributed in the scoring department take pride of the team's performance. I have to give it to my teammates, to the entire team, sa coaching staff namin, talagang uh, Lahat nagsasakripisyo, lahat uh, more than willing to walk the extra mile para makuha itong victory na ito. Well, salamat kami sa Senate fans. Uh, we had a good game dahil dala rin kami ng uh, energy ng crowd. Congrats to our coach, to our players. At uh, magaling din ang nilalunong kabila. Aside from the staff and beneficiaries of the defenders, Senate Minority Leader Senator Franklin Drillon also witnessed the hardcore action. Uh, ako po'y nandito para sumaporta sa ating uh, UNTV at sa ating mga teams. At lalo na po sa ating mga phone, phone beneficiaries. Uh, congratulations po. Game 2 of the final series is set on March 12 at the Smart Araneta Coliseum. In case the Kamau takes Game 2, Game 3 will be on March 19, still at the Big Dome. A 4 million pesos tax-free prize awaits the champion and 2 million pesos for the runner-up team, all for their beneficiaries. Bernard Danis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. And those are the reasons behind the news in March of 5, 2018. I am William Theo, and because we need to know, we will always ask why. Thank you for watching Why News.